Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my scope. If you've not been here before, my name is Anita. I'm a wife and a mom and a Bible teacher, and I'm excited to share with you about this story I found in the Bible. I haven't read this in a very long time, and it blessed me this morning, so I wanted to share it with you guys about this random woman and uh, what we can learn from her today. How is everyone? Hope you guys are having a blessed morning. How's everybody doing? How is everyone today? Hi. Hope you guys are feeling good. Good morning, Pam. Amen. Bless God. Hey, Tamisha, how are you, sis? Good to see you this morning. Who else we got on here? What's going on? See six or seven of you guys jumped on right away. Hey, Mrs. Proverbs 31. I love that name. Amen. All right. I'm going to have to follow. <laughs> Some folks, I just follow because of their names. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, sis. How are you? Hope things are going well with you. Did you guys vote yesterday? <laughs> I did. I was like probably one of the last people to vote, but I did. I did vote yesterday. I don't know. Maybe that's just in my state, but uh, it was quite a few things going on. So anyway, today i'm looking at second samuel chapter 20. this is so cool hey you blessed amen amen tamisha it's good to see you we got to catch up sis i was just thinking about you today i really was i really was good good amen i am healed i love that amen i am healed i am saved i am whole i'm delivered i am set free hallelujah amen all that because my god is all that I am cancer free. Glory to God. I love that testimony. He says, keep saying it. Amen. Blessings to you too. Praise God. Good to see you this morning. So, hey, there is this story in the Bible that you may not have seen um, or read about. Like, I read it a long time ago, but I kind of forgot about it. You're very welcome um, that I forgot about it. Good morning, Roxy. Good morning, Sandra. <laughs> And it's in 2 Samuel chapter 20. And it's literally like 10 verses about this chick and that's it. Um, but it's so powerful and God showed me like so much about it. Um, so it's 2 Samuel chapter 20. And basically this is the story of a woman who was a nameless woman in the Bible. They literally just call her um, a woman of wisdom of Bel Abel Beth Maka. She's just some random wise woman that the Bible talks about. But we can learn some stuff from her, you guys. Look at this. 2 Samuel chapter 20. It starts at verse 14. Um, and so basically what's going on is Abel is um, the man of God. And he's following after David. And there's another group that broke off from David. And they're following somebody else. And, you know, this guy is just going around and, and slaughtering God's people and that. So they're looking for him. So Abel and his people, good morning, Rhonda, <laughs> are looking for this guy. And so basically they came to this lady's town and um, they had like put a bank against the city. They were pretty much trying to um, kind of capture him. And so they, they put like this bank around the whole city just so they could get this one guy because he was like going against the king and going against, you know, um, what God was um, having happen. And, um, so they were for God, and then this one guy was leading a revolt against the king and against David, and so they were trying to get this guy. So anyway, Abel is the man who's leading this, and he is set up this like temp, this camp around the city. Pretty much, they're going to go in the city and slaughter everybody because they want to get this one guy. So then it says in verse um, uh, 16, then cried a wise woman out of the city, here, here, say, I pray you come near that I may speak with you. And when the woman was come near, the woman said, are you Joab? So Joab was the person who was leading this, this revolt. And he answered, I am he. And she said to him, hear the words of thy handmaiden. And he said, I hear, I do hear. Then she spake saying, um, there was to speak in an old time that you should ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. So the first thing she does is she compliments him. And she says, you know what? You used to be the person that people go to if they needed some, some wisdom or if they needed some encouragement, they should come to you. And then she says, I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel 
Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Like, why are you doing this? Why are y'all camped around my city? Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, have lifted up his hand against the king, even against King David. Deliver him only and I will depart from the city. So he's like, look, I'm coming for one dude. That's all I want, right? And the woman said unto him, behold, his head shall be thrown unto thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab, and he blew a trumpet. They retired from the city. Everyone went to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem to the king. Boom, done. She's like, you know what? Um, if that's the only guy you're after, then why are you like coming up in my house and tearing up my stuff? And so this is like pretty grotesque, you know, in the Bible to think of somebody chopping somebody's head off just to you know, keep peace in the city. But let me show you something that God was showing me through this. First of all, you only have one enemy. You have one enemy. Your enemy's not your husband. Your enemy's not your boss. Your enemy's not, you know, any person. The enemy is the devil. He is the one thing that is trying to sneak in your camp, trying to sneak in your house, trying to sneak in your church, trying to sneak in your life. One enemy. And so they were looking for just this one guy. They're about to tear up the whole place. And we see that in the Bible, God is a God of, of justice. But in these Old Testament days, he was like, you know what? If you guys are not going to repent and do the right thing, I'm coming for all y'all, your whole family, the whole city, the whole. God doesn't have to do that if we would cast out the enemy out our house. Come on, somebody. We need to say, you know what, devil? Enough is enough. Not in my house, not in my church, not in my relationship, not in my marriage, not at my school, not in my business you know, no. And so there's only one enemy. We have to use wisdom to cast him out. Get him out your house. Get him out your business. And the problem will be solved. That was the first thing I noticed. So we can't let the enemy have our home. We can't let him um, be held captive in our stuff. You know, as if we're going to be wise women like this wise woman was, then we have to be thinking, you know what? There is only one enemy here and that's who I'm coming after. I'm not coming after my husband's neck. I'm not coming after, you know, these other people. I'm not coming after my boss. I'm not, you know, and sometimes us women, like we get upset about what's happening in our environment. It's the work of the enemy. And instead of going to the enemy and casting him out, you know, and, and taking care of him, we're going to deal with all the other people that he's using to do his handiwork. No, this woman said, you know what? If that's the only person you need up out of here, don't ruin my city. Don't ruin my church. Don't ruin my home and my family and my relationship. No, I'll give you the person you're after. And so they went and got him. This is another thing I noticed. Life is hard, but wisdom is free. That's my second point. Life is hard, but wisdom is free. In any situation, I know, Rhonda, I, I thought that was so awesome, you know? that we could literally like pinpoint the problem. Like other people aren't the problem. The devil is the problem. The sin in the camp is the problem. So we have to be wise because wisdom is free. God says he gives wisdom liberally and upbraideth not to whoever asks. Whoever needs wisdom, you need wisdom, ask God. God, I need wisdom for these kids. God, I need wisdom in this relationship. God, I need wisdom on my job. God, I need some wisdom doing these taxes. I need wisdom to vote. I need wisdom to go shopping. Whatever you need wisdom for. God said, here it is. So why aren't we asking for wisdom on like the regular? Like I was just thinking like, I need to ask for more wisdom. You know, it's something that God says he gives liberally. We can always, always, always ask for wisdom. And so that's something that we definitely want to do. Now, the third thing is be a peacemaker. It says that she is known as one of the peaceful and faithful in Israel. Be a peacemaker in your home. Be a peacemaker in your community. You know, there are some threats in your house. There are some threats in your community. There are some threats on your job. There are some threats all around you, but you don't have to be you know, without help and defenseless. The enemy is literally 
you know, stacking the odds against you, surrounding your environment, literally trying to surround your mind, just filling your head up with lies, trying to tell you that, you know, your marriage will never succeed, trying to tell you that your kids are never going to get saved, trying to tell you that you'll never find a church home and, and just lies. And it's literally like the same way we see in this scripture, how they were just encamped on the outside. Not only did she didn't just stay in her own house and worry about her own peoples and, and all of that. No, she went and peeked over the wall and said, hmm, I see what's going on here. We have to be as women alert and awake and wise to what the enemy is doing because he's always got a setup. He's always trying to, to make the situation to his advantage and trying to set us up against God. And we have to learn how to look and see what's going on in our house. Look and see what's going on in your environment. It's going to be so important because we need to be wise. So pray and ask for wisdom. Be a peacemaker. Ask for wisdom to make peace. This is the third thing. She was not afraid to ask for help. I love this part. Yes, strength and wisdom and just everyday stuff. Everyday stuff right? So she was not afraid to ask for help. She didn't do this by herself. She didn't go chop off his head all by herself. No, it says in verse 22, then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bikri. You know, some of us women are sticklers for asking for some help. You know, you need some help. You know, you need some help. <laughs> We cannot do this thing by ourselves. We can see that the enemy is coming after us, coming after our community, coming after our family. Look at the news, people. I mean, watch what's going on in the world. We need some help. We need a group of women. We need to link arms. We need to pray together. You know, you're not an island out here all by yourself. You're not the only one that's being threatened by the enemy. We all got problems. We all need help. We all got crazy kids. Our husbands all get on our nerves. We need to come together and not be afraid to ask for help because guess what? That's wisdom. That's wisdom to just say, you know, sis, I need some help. He's so busy making drama, using people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just dramatic, right? So don't let your pride be a hindrance to being, to bringing the peace. Don't let it be a hindrance to the peace that you can experience in your home and in your mind, in your heart. You know, you want to go to bed feeling like accomplished, like you did something today. Like you want to feel peace in your home. You want to have peace in that car. You want to have peace in your community. You know, there's so many like drive-by shootings and craziness. Get in the fight we've already won. Come on, Tamisha. Yes, it's a it's a done deal. The battle's already won. People close to you. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Cherry. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, when you are a person who can ask for help, then that means that you are humble. You know, be a be a humble woman because that's a sign of wisdom. That's a sign of wisdom that you can say, you know what? I don't got enough money. I need to go and get them food stamps. I need to go and get, thank you. Thank you, Cherry. I have to go get me some earrings to match, sis. I don't got no earrings on today. <laughs> um, but thank you. I love this cardigan. So yeah, we have to reach out for help because we totally need it. Yes, pray more together. Absolutely. Um, you know, the women that I um, work with, with Wifestyle Image Network, we have a day of prayer and fasting every single month, like clockwork. We've been doing it for two years, two years. It's like, let's take some time out and fast and pray and come together. Stop being so like independent all the time. You know, God made us to help one another, to need one another. That's why we're one body with a lot of different parts. And so we have to humble ourselves and say, you know what? I need some money. I need some help with this marriage. I need some help with these kids. I need some help with my house. You know, one time I had an issue with my stove. Like I could not clean it. I don't know. I don't know what I did, but I just, you know, it was just something simple, but it was annoying to me. I was like, you know what? I need a wise woman, an older woman, somebody who has a house, who has a stove to show me how to clean this thing. Like it was just such a simple thing, you know? And I was feeling prideful. Like I should know how to do this. Like I, like I got no home training, you know? <laughs> but God humbled me in that thing. You know, being a new wife, being a new mom, I was just like, I don't know how to clean. So I don't know how to get that stain out. I don't know how to clean that carpet. I'm not sure how to, you know, just even simple things or bigger things like what am I supposed to do? My husband just told me he, that he wants a divorce. What am I supposed to do? You know, I don't have enough money to go to the end of the week. What am I supposed to ask for help? That's what you do. You ask for help because we are here to help one another. And our biggest helper is the Holy Spirit. He is the helper. He is the comforter. 
So my first point was, there's only one enemy. Get the one enemy out your house. Get the one enemy out your mind. Get the one enemy out. Do whatever you have to do to locate the source of the problem. Use wisdom to cast him out. And then all of his mess has to go with it. The second thing is, ask for wisdom because wisdom is free. It's free. How much stuff? Yes, come on now. There is strength in numbers. Absolutely. How much stuff do we have to pay for? That you always have to pay for this. You always have to pay for that. You know, God says, I'm going to give you wisdom for free. So take it, women. Take the wisdom. You know, pray for wisdom every day, every day, every day identify the threat in your home so you can know what you're going after. Know what you're going after in prayer. Know what you're going after because if we aren't observant in the spirit, then we won't identify when the enemy is approaching and when he's trying to mess our lives up. And then the third thing is don't be afraid to ask for help. She was not afraid. Support each other. Come on, sis. Absolutely. Use wisdom even in seeking your help. Because that's the thing, if you don't ask for wisdom first, then you just go and go and ask any old body for help. No, you need to find other wise women. Look at this. This is this is so cool. In verse um, 19, she says, I am one of them that are peaceful and faithful in Israel. In other words, I'm not the only one. How does she know that? She knew that because guess what? Her circle was full of other wise women. She wasn't just out there herself. She knew that she was just one of them that was peaceful and faithful. God will send the help when we ask. Absolutely, he will. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Have you ever just been, had your back against the wall and God just came in and did what only God can do? Come on now. We must encourage each other. In order to be an encourager, we must be in prayer for, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Tamisha, yes. Girl, I heard that, yes. <laughs> absolutely. And guess what? When you are peaceable, you're the one who making peace. You're the one who's staying faithful. Other peaceful and faithful type people will be attracted to you. You'll be able to identify other people who are like-minded and you'll be able to build a circle of women to fortify your house, to fortify the things that God has given you authority over in your life. And so you want to surround yourself with those kind of people. She knew that she was only one of them because she knew who they were. In other words, she had a mentor. She had somebody who was going to stand with her and agree with her. Come on. We're all a part of God's body. <laughs> you know, stand with me. Agree with me. You know, come on. I love that song by Hezekiah Walker. Use wisdom in seeking that help. Your faithfulness, and this is my last point, your faithfulness makes you reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. There is something to be said about any woman, married, single, rich, poor, young, old. Notice that none of those descriptives are in this chapter, none. We don't know anything about this woman. We don't know anything about her at all. We don't know her ethnicity. Well, praise God, Sherry, amen. We don't know anything about her marital status. We don't know anything about her age, not at all. So that tells me that any woman can be wise. That tells me that any woman can be faithful. That means that any woman can be reliable, dependable, trustworthy. And guess what? When you have, that's your MO and you're dependable and you're always trustworthy and you're always faithful and you're always the one who's making peace in your house. You're always the one who's looking to see where the enemy is trying to get an entrance then other people will be attracted to that kind of woman. And you'll find other women who are like that and you'll be able to join arms, ask for help, you know, fight the enemy together, throw his head over the wall. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter what your status is in life. In other words, this is a no name, I don't know, random woman out the Bible who has no name, no ethnicity, no marital status, no age, no nothing. So that means it could be you or me, amen? We need to be the ones who are wise today. Let's pray for some wisdom. Come on, I am one of them, are you? I love that. You know what, I, that'll preach. Verse, nine, verse 19, I am one of them. Are you one of them today? Do you wanna be one of them? I wanna be one of them, <laughs> amen? Know the faithful and wise women around you, okay? Support them, support them. Time out for the, the gnashing and, and the gossip and, and the, you know, just biting and devouring. Yes, let's be women of peace and wisdom. Amen, amen. Because the thing is, we are stronger together. 
We are stronger together and we are stronger when we are wise because God is the one who gives us wisdom. He's the one who gives us strength, you know? And man, I am one of them. That's gonna be my motto for today. I am one of them. <laughs> because you know what? We all know who they ain't. <laughs> We all know the women who are not so wise. They're the ones that looking crazy on social media. The ones that they catch on the news doing crazy stuff, wearing crazy stuff. Like, you know who is not one of them. So let's be one of them today. Amen. Hallelujah. I am one of them. Amen. All right. Stop comparing. I love that. Yes. Because we often compare ourselves to everybody else. You know what? Compare yourself to somebody wise and try to be like them. Come on. I am one of them. Amen. Lord, I thank you and praise you for each and every person that's joined me today. Lord God, we want to be one of them. We want to be one of those people who seek after wisdom, who make peace, God. This is a crazy world. We look at this Bible story about this woman, man's head being chopped off and thrown over a wall, God. But somebody just got shot yesterday. Somebody just got burned up yesterday. The violence in the United States is rising and, and persecution all over the world, God. We want to be wise. God, it doesn't matter if people know what our name is. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what color we are, God. We want to be known as wise. So fill us up. We're asking for wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for all the hearts today. My goodness, it must be heart day. You guys are awesome. God bless you. Yes, sis. Amen. So yeah, if you wanted that scripture reference again, it's 2 Samuel chapter 20 and then i'm looking at verses um it was verses 14 through 22 awesome 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 scripture it was a whopping what seven to ten verses that talk about this woman and i got a lot out of it this morning in my devotional time so i pray that it was a blessing to you i love you guys thanks for joining me every morning and i'll see you tomorrow love you bye